Here's how I do CG armor without a motion capture suit. First thing, get your footage, could be anything. You bring it into this program called Wonder Studio. Now you might have heard about that adding in CG characters into your footage, but you can also just use it for motion capture, and it's actually cheaper to do it like that. Bring in your footage, tell it which character is which, leave all the settings default if you want to, export as an FBX, and then just wait an hour. But once it's done, bring it into Blender, and you have perfect motion capture for your footage relative to the camera. And I say relative to the camera because the camera might be moving, and if that's the case, all you have to do to even things out so he's not just dancing around everywhere, track the camera in After Effects or Blender, and then just parent the armature to the camera, and it will cancel out all the camera motion. And there you go. 95% perfect motion capture. 95%. We'll talk about that in a minute. So then get your character. It really doesn't matter what it is. I rigged this one with Mixamo. To retarget the animation, I used the Rococo add-on, but there's a, there's a lot of good ones out there. It really doesn't matter. On frame zero, just line up the two armatures. Hit from current pose, not rest pose. Turn off auto scaling. And there you go. So now we have the camera, we got the character. How do you get your actor in there? If you were doing a fully CG character like Master Chief or Doom Guy, this would be perfect. You'd be done. That's it. How do you get the actor in there? How do you get your head in there? I'll talk about that in the next video. Stay tuned for part two. Hi, this is part two of doing CGI costumes. If you followed the first one, you got your camera, you got your motion capture. Now we put the head from the footage on the body. After I posted the first one, people were guessing on how you actually do the head. So we're gonna go through some of those guesses right now and see how they work. So someone said, oh, it's really simple. You just overlay the footage onto the motion capture, right? Cause you already got it relative to the camera, it should be good. Like I said, it's 95% perfect. It's not 100% perfect, but if you want it to look wobbly and weird, looks great, do you? Somebody said, yeah, just do a metahuman. Just uh, just make a metahuman of the face and put it on there and animate the face and every little detail and... Uh, yeah, looks great. Somebody said, yeah, just render it out without the head and then track where the head would be in 2D with your compositor with After Effects, something like that, and do what with it? What would you do after that? Is this what you're trying to do? Is it? You could do all of those things with varying degrees of success, but why? Why? Why would you do? Here's what you do. So open up your footage in your chosen compositing program. I use After Effects. Go over here to Stabilize Motion, and then pick a point on the actor's collar. Now you could put a tracking dot right here if you thought to when filming. That's what I do most of the, sometimes. I try to, but it, it could be a button. It could just be a shadow on the collar. Anything, just right here. Put a tracking marker there. Stabilize it. Now everything's moving as it's supposed to relative to the collar of the shirt. Scale it up as long as it doesn't leave the frame to preserve any detail that you want. Render it back out. And then you can just bring it back into Blender and pair it the location to the neck bone of your character. It doesn't matter if you change the proportions of the character. It doesn't matter how it's moving. It will stay where it's supposed to. And once you have this parented, you can do a copy rotation constraint or a track to constraint to the camera and it will always be facing the camera no matter where your character or your camera goes. And since the motion capture is so good, once it's there, nobody will know. Now, say you were to rotoscope out your head and neck, place it on there, just like I said, and then your character does this, and their chin starts clipping into the character where it would be occluding the neckline. That's really easy too, it's just one extra step. So instead of just rotoscoping out both the head and the neck, in addition to that, you rotoscope out just the head, cutting it off at the jawline, copy and pasting your original head and neck layer, changing the texture of that layer to the rotoscoped head layer, snapping the 3D cursor to the camera on a single frame, doesn't matter which frame it is, setting the transform axis to the 3D cursor, and then just scaling down the footage in. From the viewport, it won't look like anything's moving, but you'll see that it's actually moving forward and scaling down relative to the camera because the 3D cursor is the camera. Then lastly, on the head layer, just apply all the constraints and parent it to the head and neck layer. And since the head and neck layer is always pointing towards the camera, the head layer will always be perfectly right between the neck layer and the camera. So you'll never even know it was there until it goes in front of something like the collar. And that's how you do it. So now you can put any actor in any 3D scene with a track camera, with great motion capture and a CG body, the head all lines up, it occludes everything that it's supposed to, and it just works out.